So what, what are you doing now? I'm, um, this is a VE direct cable. It's a proprietary um, Victron cable that goes from the devices to the um, battery management system and the charger. Um, and I am trying to get the slack out of the cable mm -hmm. because um, they have Ethernet ends connections. Okay. And so we can't just crimp, we can't just cut the cable and crimp a new end on it because they're so, pre-made Ethernet cables. Right. So you're just cleaning up the wires. So I'm, yeah. So I'm trying to uh, just trying to make everything look good. All We're almost done with the wiring. Now it's just making it pretty. Nice. Yeah. yeah, it's looking really good. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So we're gonna we have the display all wired up. And we're going to turn it on for the first time. Um, I'm about to connect the charger to the AC outlet in this extension cord back here. Um, so here's the power strip. Here's the power cord. Now, turn it on. got the inverter on. We want the charger on. Okay. Okay. Come on, ACN. Main's on. That's good. We never had this before. Ha ha! It's charging. Woohoo! Woo This used to be an extension cord that we um, cut the end off of because we needed something with a plug end, but we didn't know how to install an end on some wiring. So we just used, um, it's an extension cord with 14 gauge wire. And um, they, it's much smaller than what they recommended for this charger. So what we did was we limited the input current to 10 amps to make sure it wouldn't get hot. Um, and that's all we really need for this. Um, so this goes into an isolation transformer, which isn't really important here, but it's important on a boat um, because it keeps uh, the uh, galvanic corrosion from happening in a, uh, when you're in the water. So it goes through here, and then it goes into the charger inverter, the multi-plus. Um, and this is, go, goes to the AC in, so this is how the, ch the batteries get charged from here. And you can see that right now it's drawing 122 watts from the shore power. Um, and it's in absorption charge mode. So um, we've, got, we've also got, um, let's see, we've got the AC out. We've got a cable going around here. Um, to a power outlet that we installed on the side of this side of the display, and this is powering uh, light. This is a this is a light that they um, gave us to show um, how much power is being consumed. So we can see that in our AC loads, this light is consuming 26 watts right now, um, and it's on all the time. And so also from the inverter charger, um, this is a split phase inverter charger, so you can do 50 or 30 amp input. Um, and so we've got cables going down here to the Lynx distributor. Um, the Lynx distributors, we've got one on either side, and then we have a battery management system for the lithium batteries in the center. Um, Lynx distributors are just really fancy bus bars that have fuses. They can't operate unless you put mega fuses in them. Um, uh, so, and they have uh, built-in fuse monitoring. So you have these little data cables going to the battery management system. And it'll tell you if any of your fuses are blown. Um, so from the charger, it goes into this side of the links. It does matter what side it goes into because the battery management system has a shunt in it and that has to go in one direction. Um, so we turn this upside down from the normal installation 
and they gave us these handy little stickers for people who need to install them upside down so that we because the, the writing was upside down and we put the stickers on so it would look right side up because um, we wanted the cable run from here to here to be shorter and if this was upside down we'd have to put it on this side over here and it would be a lot longer um, so the charger charges the battery by going down to here and then it goes through the battery management system so the shunt can read the, um, read the uh, battery voltage. And um, so that's how it detects whether, um, how charged the battery is, whether it's undercharged or overcharged. Um, and if it's either of those things, it will shut down what it needs to shut down. So if it's undercharged, uh, it'll shut off all the loads so that it can't draw any more power. And if it's overcharged, it will shut off the charger so that it can't fry the batteries. And then um, going to the other Lynx distributor, there's a bus bar um, that takes the battery cables down to the batteries. And the reason they're like this is because um, even though like physically these could be short, this could be shorter, they all have to be the same length so that, um, so that it doesn't draw unevenly from one battery and not another. Um, and then these are two 100 amp hour lithium LIFE PO4 batteries. Um, we got them strapped in here so they can't move around. And these cables are data cables from the batteries to the BMS so they can read, um, they can also read more information about the individual cells of the batteries, whether they're balanced and that kind of thing. Um, also coming out of the distributor, this is a battery protect, which um, can shut down the, sh it can disconnect the, the loads. This is the DC loads, uh, fuse block for the DC loads, and it can disconnect them if um, the BMS senses any trouble. And we've got, uh, right now we've got, we've got it powering our Garmin um, chart plotter which is actually reading GPS right now through all of the loop and everything. And um, it's connected with a NEMA 2000 cable adapter to show uh, the data going through. And it's also got connected with an ethernet cable. Um, and there's also power. So, and then this is a Veritron display with various gauges and sensors that are also connected. Um, we have a Serbo GX, which is like the information hub of the whole system. So um, this is where everything kind of centralizes all the data. And it goes to this readout here, which is the GX touch display. Um, and so that this is like the centralized place where we can see everything that's going on at once. And um, we can also, there's a phone app where uh, we just look at the Serbo GX and we can see all the data for everything. And this is a um, solar charge controller. We don't have solar, obviously, right now, but it is hooked up and functional. And we've got a solar panel on the back over here on display. So if we were to move this outside, it would work. We did move it outside. And it was, um, we were getting about 36 watts as a peak when we were facing it right at the sun when the sun, sun was rising. Um, so why did we decide to put the 120 on display as opposed to like the 7515 or the 7510? Yeah, so we only, for 150 watt panel, we only need the 7510, but we decided to go with the 120 because if you're building an array or you want to uh, future proof and you want to make sure that your MPPT controller is going to be um, sized up for anything you might encounter in the future, the 120 is probably the most versatile. It also can do 12, 24, or 48 volt output. So as more boats go to electric inboards or bigger electric systems, you're finding more and more uh, boats and sprinter vans and other just vehicles that are going to 48 volt systems. It makes it easier to, to invert, to run your induction cooktops. There are now windlasses and thrusters being built in 48 volts and you need to run smaller electrical cables. So um, this is the most versatile and it gives people the idea of the scale and size of that MPPT controller. Excellent. So the other ones, the 7515 and the 7510 are only 1224 or are they 12? Or? They're, they're 1224. Okay.
Um, this one just has the most versatility with the 48 volt. Cool. Cool. I'm going to take this in the sun and see what happens. Yeah. I don't know if there's any settings we need to change in here. Um, we should probably log in with the app also and look to see yes. if there's solar panel settings that need to get changed. Yes. We have not tried that yet. We have to log in with the VE, the Victron Configure app, which is a really, like, protected I, app that only professionals are supposed to use, so we have to... I think to... on the solar panel we can use the Easter app. Oh, cool, cool. Yeah. You mean the... Um, ah. the, the Connect. The Victron Connect? Or the Victron Connect, yeah. The VE Direct is a cable. That's right, Victron. Yeah. Woo. Now that should be getting something. And we're getting charged. What are we getting? 21, 30, 33, 37, 35. That's most of the panel. And for a January day in Seattle yeah. at our northern latitude that's probably that's pretty really good efficient. yeah really really nice this has been our display panel though for a long time it looks like it's streaking now it's smudgy all we need to get a microfiber cloth for that yeah 32 all right it was uh see it's charging now it once it hits about 31 or 32 it looks like it's charging but their batteries are pretty full yeah yeah it does it's already stopped cool well at least we know everything's hooked up right yeah yeah that's good and those are the main components of the system that's a, that's about those are the basics any questions I have questions yeah so this is your battery controller. Yes, that's is it the- Is telling these two sets of wires to give different amounts of power to those batteries as they needed? Um, cell balancing happens, no, they don't give different amounts of power. Um, cell balancing happens when, what it'll do is it'll force the charger to stay in absorption mode um, for longer and it'll give like short bursts of energy in absorption mode and that causes the um, undercharged cells to catch up with the overcharged cells. And it'll keep doing that um, kind of for a while until it, the cell voltages are all the same. So, um, so that, that's how that happens. So the battery management system is basically slowing down the charging process so that it, then they naturally will absorb it evenly? Is that what I'm understanding by the short bursts or whatever? It's something about the short bursts. I don't fully understand it, but it's just something about the short bursts that allow the undercharged cells to come up without damaging the already charged cells. Yeah. But you still see it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I get it now. The, the, I don't totally the know. The wires aren't changing what they're doing, the, the, and the battery's not changing. It's the, uh, the way it's being charged that makes them adjust. Yes, um, because yeah, because if you think about it, it can't it can't separate these batteries can't be separated really in this system because coming from the charger, there's only one positive and one negative wire. They're connected. Um, yeah. So the distributor has nothing to do with how much power comes out of those wires, other than it's on or off. Yeah, and the right. and the the fuse sizes, the size of the fuse will be like you can't have a certain amount of. So it'll blow if it'll product. blow if it goes if it's if it goes to a, an amount of power that's not right for the wire size. We we size it based on the wires because the wires are undersized for everything else because we don't we don't need to draw that much power so we undersize the wires and we base the fuses on the wire size because those are the weakest link. Any other questions? Mario. What, what was your influence to build this? The influence to build this? Yes. Um, we needed to get it done by the boat show. We wanted to have it all done by the boat show. Oh, okay. okay. And it was an exciting learning project for all of us. Nice. So um, Dave, Dave designed all the templates for the backing plates, so he figured out how to use a shaper tool over there. Um, and I did the template for like how this was all going to be arranged. And I read the manuals to make sure we did everything right and that kind of thing. Um, 
So it was really the push to get everything ready by the boat show and also being excited about it. So you guys are going to display this at the boat show, actually? Yeah. Nice. Well, it looks great. Thank you. OK, so this is the brains. Servo is the brains, yeah. Can you have more detail on exactly what those brains are doing? I see a lot of Yes, yeah. Um, so it's the centralized hub. VE bus are like the data cables. It's like uh, from one device to another, all going to the servo, um, uh, transmitting the data from, from each device. And um, you can also plug in uh, other monitoring. Like there's, there's one that goes from the MPPT to the servo to monitor that. Um, and there's one that goes from, there's one that goes from this to the servo. Um, and there's a wire, there's a power wire going from the servo to the battery management system um, because in case the, the BMS needs to shut down the batteries, um, this has a very small reserve power supply and we have it connected to this instead of the, uh, instead of the batteries or the charger because we want this to be able to keep monitoring with Bluetooth if the batteries get shut down. Um, so that we can still control it. Um, but the servo, yes, this is a centralized hub. Um, there's some ports that we're not even using. Um, like these, these ports are all could be potential tank sensors. Um, we could probably, I think it's up to four tanks or more. Um, certain relays can be here, power. Um, yeah, there can be other, other sensors like ambient temperature. Um, and then also, this is how this is this is how we connect to the Garmin too through the NEMA 2000 adapter. So is it right that this doesn't actually control or change anything? It just takes information in and then sends it out. It takes it in, but we can control it through here, uh, which is kind of controlling right directly from here. This is like the panel. This is the interface for us, and so is the app. So we can use both of those within the Servo GX to control. It's not just monitoring. We can also control through it. Right. But it's sending it's sending information to control. This is the actual control devices out elsewhere, not this itself. Is that? We we control everything. We can control everything through the Servo GX, except for some really advanced things that they they make you do it in a more difficult way to make sure you're not screwing it up. But the basic things, some basic things, we can control through the um, Servo GX. Like we can limit the current for charging and that kind of thing. Yeah. Any other questions? Cool. Thanks for listening. <laughs>
click there, see those lights are coming on. There we go. So, 